All right guys, welcome to another video for the Poco X3 Pro. A couple of days back, I made a video on how to install the MIUI 13 port, which is based on the Redmi 9T onto this wonderful device. And since then, I have been using it. I've played a couple of matches in BGMI or PUBG Mobile, whatever you want to call it. I've charged it, discharged it, I've inserted a SIM card and then removed it. I've tried almost every possible user scenario to give you guys a accurate review. And that is what we are going to do today. So before we get into the details, a very, very happy Makar Sankranti to all of you out there in India and abroad as well. May the coming year be great and with full of opportunities and good health. So if you've not subscribed, please subscribe and hit that notification bell icon because it doesn't cost you anything. And it really motivates us to make amazing content like this. If you think you like chatting with like-minded people, well, please join us on Telegram. We have more than 1500 members over there. You can follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. And last but not the least, if you think the hard work is worth the effort, please click on the join button and support the channel. Now, without further ado, hello, awesome people. Welcome to Phone Ops. My name is Kalash. Let's get going. So a quick overview to what exactly we have on our hand. This was released on the 12th of January. This build is based on Android 11 and it works on both YU and Bhima. This is based on the beta version 22.1.5 and it has been ported by the wonderful guys over at Mint BGST. Now you have initial MI 13 release ported from this device based on Xiaomi.eu beta. That is a weekly build decrypted by default. SE Linux status is enforcing multi languages, fully, fully RW system, de bloated some apps, and then there is a full change log. Of course, Google apps are included. Safety net is passing and that's everything they have mentioned over here. So now this is the place where comes the real review into the picture. Now, the moment you boot into this ROM for the first two to four hours, you will see that it's settling down. Sometimes it will stutter. Sometimes it will do this, that. But after say about 12 to 24 hours, the ROM really starts settling down. And by that, what I mean is compared to the stock MIUI 13, which I experienced on the Mi 11X, they have done some, you know, user interface changes to make the UI faster. This is not necessarily more smoother than MIUI 12.5 enhanced or 13, but it is definitely faster as you can see over here. The app icon animations are present, but I'll tell you what that does. When you have animations which are these fast, you will feel that it's sort of stuttering. I don't really see the animations working that fluently as I would on a Mi 11X or even MIUI 12.5 enhanced on the Poco X3 Pro. So the very, very slight jittery experience is present. It would not necessarily be a deal breaker, but for me at least, you know, these animations don't work. Now animations are animations and they can definitely be fixed by a new launcher and stuff like that. So that is there, but yes, my initial experience has been pretty good. The consistency is there. If you remember in the install video, I did mention there was one bug of settings not opening. I've not experienced that since. So that is a good thing. And this is full blown MIUI 13 that we are talking about. It does come with the MIUI dialer, which means call recording will not have a prompt. It does come with MIUI messages and stuff like that. So you don't get the Google stuff because this is based on the China's China weekly beta. The gallery application over here, well, it is the updated one. You do get the magic eraser and all the other things. You do see that I have used the screen recorder. And what do I say about the camera application? Because as you can see, it does come with the same old UI, no new features over here. But if you go to things like vlog mode, it'll tell you that it's downloading and you have to wait, dual video. So, you know, all these options are present. If you actually go to gallery, you will see that I did click a picture and the picture turned out to be really good. So the camera experience is nothing out of the ordinary compared to MIA 12.5 enhanced. It works, it does the job and it does the job fine. Now on the home screen, you have standard MIA 13 stuff going on because you have this search bar at the bottom. Don't mistake this for a Google search bar because this is a China build, okay? The moment you pinch in, you will see that you have the MIA 13 launcher, of course. And yes, as I said in my initial video as well, you do get the molten glass and all the other wallpapers as well. And they are working absolutely fine. No problem whatsoever. Matter of fact, uh, always on display is also working, although that is known to drain some battery. So on a LCD panel, I would not request you to use it. But as you can see, 
this animation effect is good and it looks really really nice and the unlock animation is also pretty good now moving on if you go to launcher settings over here you will see that you have google discover search bar provider you can set it to google if you've set it to search so you have google and you can change the layout by clicking on don't show text this is one of the mi 13 features i don't know what there is about this particular look but i you know sort of find it cool you do have dolby atmos over here which is working in all its glory so that's a good thing as you can see over here so you can enable or disable it from here let's see there you go it's off and now it's turned on so dolby has been added and i definitely felt the difference so that is a good thing we were in launcher settings right so let's go ahead and uh, yeah disable this and bam it automatically restarts the launcher now apart from this you know you have hide app icons global icon animations arrange items in recents in horizontally vertically show memory status at any given point the memory did not go below 1.8 gigabytes so being conservative that's good memory management now if you talk about the recents you will see that you know in certain aspects of this particular rom you will notice that it actually feels like a port because as you can see we are on 120 hertz let me actually go ahead and show you that so if you go to display over here you will see we are running 120 hertz mode let's actually go to 90 hertz mode and uh, let's go to additional settings let's go to developer options because i just recollected of a comment that said you should have shown 90 fps working so well, that comment was very important because as you can see we are on 120 hertz mode set it to 90 set it to 60. yeah what's weird is 90 hertz is not doing anything over here right so that mode doesn't work but coming back to the point we are at 120 hertz and if you go to the multitasking menu you will see that sometimes it's smooth but sometimes while it slows down just keep an eye on the animations while it slows down it feels a little stuttery it feels a little jittery you have all these options over here just like 12.5 nothing new nothing fancy over here if you swipe from the top to bottom you have a completely you know overhauled control center is what i would say because they've gone for this sort of translucent ui with different accent colors and stuff but the functionality remains the same you can increase or decrease the brightness from here you can swipe to get access to your notifications and things like those to the left of course you have google feed now i was surprised to see that they have come up with a new ui for google feed today not this rom google feed as a whole and that's a good thing and google feed is smooth and all but it's not as smooth as it would be on some custom roms now the point of getting mii 13 even in a port or mii 13 as a whole is that you not only give us better smoothness which i did experience in 11x but not on this device so maybe when the official mii 13 comes it will be better than this but credit where it's due to the bgst guys they've done a brilliant job this rom is definitely usable you can make calls you can record calls wi-fi calling is working i did not test uh, video over uh, the carrier network i have checked carrier aggregation that was working for me in geo 4g mumbai right now one thing that you also don't get is google photos unlimited storage so let's quickly go here there you go so basically you don't really get unlimited storage in google that is one thing but you do get gallery and some additional features now if you go to security over here you will see that you sort of have the updated version but not really the latest one now look at this animation over here it doesn't feel stuttery but yeah i mean to their credit well they do have the new game turbo they do have the you know always on sidebar and even that stuttered for a little bit so if you can manage a few stutters here and there you know you should be fine you won't really have any major problem now another thing to notice over here is the sound panel they've made it four rows and you know you have this slider with these tactical vibrations and stuff those things are there and they are working absolutely fine the weather app and all the other things are present and they work absolutely fine now if you go to settings over here you have usual stuff i'm not going to cover things which i have already covered because then it's going to just make the video long and repetitive repetitive information is not good 
Fingerprint work absolutely fine. Face unlock works absolutely fine. Always on display works absolutely fine. Let's talk about the important factors over here. The charging speeds on this particular ROM are pretty rock solid. 27 or 33 watt chargers are working absolutely okay. Now let's talk about the battery and performance over here. You do get this balanced or performance profile and save battery option as well. You do see that I've been on this phone on battery for 33 hours and 49 minutes and it's been on standby most of the time, but we've had one hour of screen on time, a couple of matches of BGMI, benchmark numbers and stuff, and we are still at 58%. So yeah, battery per se, this is pretty good. I did not do a, you know, hardcore battery test by inserting two SIM cards, one memory card and using it as a maniac because this is not my primary phone. This is my primary phone. But yes, battery backup is pretty decent. You should get easily seven to eight hours of screen on time and that should be absolutely fine. Apart from this, you get usual MIUI 13 stuff. If you talk about the important things over here, well, safety net is passing by default, so you have nothing to worry there. As you can see, Google Play Store certification is present, so your banking applications would work just fine. You do have DRM Info Widevine L1. That means you can watch your content in HD on Amazon Prime and Netflix. Now, the important part that all of you have been waiting for, the benchmark numbers. Have they improved considerably or not? Let's go ahead and have a look. So let's right here go to the screenshots section. There you go. Now in the CPU throttle test, I would say from an MIUI point of view, this is a pretty decent ROM or de decent performance. The CPU throttle to 90% of its max performance and the average score was 186, 818 GIPS. Now this is with the performance mode enabled and game turbo enabled as well. Moving on, if we talk about the N22 benchmark numbers over here, I did see a decent score over there. 588 943 so that's pretty good for miui again if you further go to geekbench over here and you go to the results let's see here 778 2774 so the benchmark numbers are rock solid the only thing that i think is lacking in this particular rom is the ui stutteriness i'm not saying it is a lot but the very slight jitter which you get from a port is there and when miui comes as a whole to this device it should be performing much much better so yeah, battery life, DRM info, banking applications, charging, everything is good. Gaming experience is also pretty good. I did run a couple of games with 90 FPS enables. Yes, that is a good thing to know, right? This ROM comes with 90 FPS enabled by default for PUBG Mobile and few other supported games. I did play on 90 FPS and I did not see it go below 68 to 70 FPS even in you know close combat matches and stuff. So, all in all, MIUI Bint BGST is a splendid effort to bring MIUI 13 to this wonderful device. If you have the time and data, this is worth a try. If you're an ASP ROM lover, well, you can probably steer away. But if you're someone who likes the full functionality of MIUI on a Xiaomi or a Poco device, go ahead and install it, follow the installation guide, and let me know in the comment section what do you think about this ROM. Until the next one, this is Kalash signing off at PhoneOps. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.